kuu. Okay. So today, feel free to ask as many questions as possible uh, because you're going to create a, a prototype, something like this. Ooh, my screen is so big, I apologize. Let me just reduce that to some good percentage, yes. So this is my phone uh, and this is the app we are going to create today. We are going to try and prototype uh, using MIT App Inventor. And in what situations would, uh, would you be able to uh, require to prototype using MIT App Inventor? For example, you have a pitch and it is in one day's time. This app took me roughly, I can say 30 minutes to make this UI. So for example, you're in a hurry and you are supposed to pitch an idea as soon as possible. This is the tool you can go to. Also, if you are volunteering, uh, let's say for innovation challenges, to teach children to have the programming principles, the if else statement, this uh, this MIT app inventor is the right is the right tool. You can teach them a bit of dynamicism, like you can reuse one screen, and you're going to do that today. So MIT, you can use that in let's say competitions in high school when you're volunteering to train these girls, feel free that and know that this is the right tool to use there. Also, if your app is static, for example, if you're creating a Bible app, that's just an example, the texts are there uh, and the texts are already there and they aren't uh, that dynamic. So you can make use of one screen, yes, and maybe integrate a bit of chat, in, with, with MIT App Inventor. And with this chat, you'll be able to at least make your users feel like they're at home. So MIT isn't that static. The only issue is you won't have a lot of freedom. Like when you see the, when you see the top navigation bar, you have to recreate and think it from scratch. So those are the challenges that maybe you can face when you're creating using MIT App Inventor. So, okay. Can you guys hear me? I'm getting messages that I can't be heard. Let me rectify the audio. Hi guys, can you hear me now? Yes, Joan. Okay, I, I, yes, I really apologize. I don't know why my voice, I don't know. Is anyone, okay, just DM me if you cannot hear me, we can try and rectify that. I really apologize for that. Awesome. So we can we can continue, right? Awesome. Okay. So I was saying we are going to create an application today, and this is how it looks like. This is an emulation from my phone. So first of all, Karibuni Nyote, welcome all. Feel free to ask as many questions as possible today. And uh, we are going to prototype this application. So thank you all for joining and supporting the online trainings that Ponytechno Girls is conducting, Karibuni Sana. And today we are going to prototype this simple application. It shows a, a list of movies. And uh, for example, if you click on one movie, it shows you the details. Uh, if you click uh, the other, let's say you want to, to view more details about Jurassic World, you can be able to view it. Yeah, something so simple. And 
uh, as I said before, MIT App Inventor is a great tool for, to prototype your idea. For example, you have a pitch like the following day. People want to see your idea in action. This is the right tool. Like uh, if you have a, an investor pitch, like this app took me around 30 to 45 minutes to make. So you can create with App Inventor as fast as possible. That is one thing. Another thing is if you maybe take your time with App Inventor, MIT App Inventor, you can make it as dynamic as possible. You can also create, uh, you can create screens uh, and, you, and reuse these screens to make your app as dynamic as possible. So if your app is, let's say, static, it doesn't have complex features. Let me see, uh, Richard, there is, oh, awesome, thank you. Okay, so when there is, when your app is so dynamic, you can take your time to create this. That is one thing. Another thing with MIT, you can use this, like MIT is a great tool to use to prototype applications during the like, innovation challenges, these outreaches. You can volunteer and train these girls to learn the programming basics because MIT is the, is the right tool to know the programming basics, the if-else statements, how to uh, make a, how to reuse a screen and define that these are real life programming statements or real life programming issues that you anyone can face when you use any language you find that the principles are a bit similar despite the differences in languages so i would recommend this tool i would really recommend this tool so today let's look at this and let's look at how you can make your application how you can replicate an application that you like into your idea and into a prototype, uh, into a prototype using MIT App Inventor. So feel free, uh, uh, you can even unmute yourself and talk to me uh, or uh, put your messages at the message, at the message section. So feel free, you can even message uh, Ruth and tell her anything is guarding this session. So feel free, I'll insist. Okay, so let's get started. This is what I created, but you're going to create something new. So I'll uh, I'll go to I'll click to my project. So what you go where you go to is you go to your browser and click on this link. Let me just share so that in case anyone is interested to go to the uh, to do MIT App Inventor or, or yeah or maybe after the session you you are interested to go and uh, Try it out. Uh, uh, I'll just paste the link there. Feel free. So you go to MIT ai2.appinventor.mit.edu, and in this page, you'll be asked to log in with your Google or Gmail account, and that's it. You'll see uh, something like this. Though my projects are a bit many, but uh, you'll have an option to create a new project. So. Uh, let's get started. So I'll click on start a new project and we'll just call it my movies too. Like that. So when you click on it, it takes a bit of time to load because it uses some virtual machine somewhere. Of course, there is MIT offline. If maybe you, you do not have that uh, many bundles to use, you can download the application and use it. So for us who have a, a bit of memory issues, we just use the online one. We only install when it's necessary. So you'll encounter the first screen and everything at the user interface is here. You find it at the designer section here. Everything is here. So like the user interface components that are like ease of access. You can use them as quickly as possible or as easily as possible are here, like a button, a checkbox. We all are familiar with this. If you put a date picker here, when you tap on it, you'll, you'll see a whole calendar and you put some little code behind in the back end and it picks a date. There is also image uh, to display images. We are going to see that. And then label. Label is just to hold text. Yeah, list picker, for example, you have an, an option of items like 
uh, if you have courses, like you want to pick, uh, let's say, mathematics, things like that, you'll find that this is very useful. And list view to display dynamics or dynamic data. So these basically are user interface components. Then we go to the layout. If you want to arrange your items horizontally, use a horizontal arrangement. If you want your items to scroll and you put, place them horizontally, use a horizontal scroll arrangement. Tabular format, you display your items using table arrangement and vertical arrangement. Just, it is this simple. Like everything uses the layman's language that we know in mathematics and in our normal English. So uh, we also have media. Of course, if you want to translate your, uh, your, your items, you can use this text to speech. There is a lot. So feel free to explore. Um, there is, if, you want to, if you're into game, to create games, with MIT App Inventor, you can create a 2D game. So maybe uh, in a few times to come, we can try and prototype like a small, fun game uh, later. Then we have maps, sensors, yeah, like proximity sensor, things like that. We have, we have even temperature. Then uh, social, you can connect to Twitter. Uh, this sharing can even connect to Facebook if you have a Facebook app, texting, things like that. Then storage, local storage and web storage. Um, connectivity, you can link to Bluetooth, the web. Huh. And then Lego Mindstorms, this is just another. Um, we call them some, you involve some robotics and sensors. MIT, you can do that. Then in the experimental section, there is the Firebase database. And this will make your app very dynamic because Firebase database is, um, is a database that uh, by Google and it's very stable. Then lastly, now this section of the extension, for example, you want a custom user interface. You can go to MIT extensions. Let me just see if I, we can extension. Okay. So MIT App Inventor has extensions. People have volunteered to create uh, extensions that are useful for you. So let me see example of extensions that maybe we can look at. But uh, it's not necessary that we look at them right now. But um, mm -hmm. image processor, like if you want to edit your images before you upload them. We also have, uh, huh, what else? Yeah, this is just an example. So you can create these extensions and upload them. You can create using Java. So yeah, this is like a rough overview of MIT App Inventor. So let's begin, let's begin. Okay, so when you look at this screen, when you look at, the, uh, at this screen, you will find that there is a title there. There is a title with a white text, and then there is something like a tab there. So let's get started. So this is like an example scenario. Like for example, you have an application that you want to replicate, or you have seen something uh, that you like, or you have prototyped it on paper, and now you're putting it down into an idea. So feel free and flexible that this is the way to go. Okay, so you come here, and this is screen one, this is the entry point of the application, and you can change the application name there. These are the first prerequisite things that you do. So you can say something like movies, app, ama, movies, poa, poa, eh? Something, eh? To make it a bit local. Then I love dark backgrounds. I don't know why, but if you're not into dark backgrounds, that's okay. But um, background color, dark gray, as you can see what we have there, it's dark gray. And then I, I don't have a background image. Then as I scroll down, I see the, <clears throat> the primary color. My primary color is red. And um, you can choose uh, another, you can just say red again for primary dark. So primary dark is this one, like the one that is on top, hapaju, penyekuna, the battery percentage uh, the here at the top. That's where 
the primary dark color is supposed to be. So if you want your app to just be all smooth, it will be that way, but most apps put a darker shade of primary color at the top of the navigation bar. So feel free, you are the designer. Then um, I'll make it scrollable because some of the list items might be a bit big to make them scroll up. Then we have um, theme. We can use a device, huh, sorry, <laughs> device default. So that will make it look that way because a normal device or a device default theme is the one that the Android device uses at the moment. So if you're using Android 7.0 or Android 9, that will be the device's default uh, theme at the top. So uh, our title, of course, is called Movies Poor Poor or Movies Poor, the one that you like, uh, whichever you prefer. So that's done. If you can look at the, uh, at the replication so far, you see Movies Poor, that is done. So let's go to the top part. You can see we've created our custom tab here. And these are this is very simple. These are just buttons. So uh, what we do is you can see that in the application here, these are three buttons. So right now they don't do anything because we're just prototyping. So you can make them move to another page or reuse this page to display a different item. You feel free. So um, when, you, when you look at uh, this, section this is these are three buttons and they are horizontally aligned so we come here at the layout section and drag and drop horizontal arrangement there so we start uh, changing some figures here and there the height i used uh, around 50 pixels because a normal uh, tab height uh, is around 50 pixels so maybe after the session i'll share with you if you're interested the material design guidelines the material design design guidelines are like the rules that you follow as a developer or as an android developer to make your app not look like an alien in, um, in an android device so there are a few rules here and there but one of it is the um, the height of the navigation bar is around 40 to 50 pixels and then we can say the width to fill the parent to fill parent so that it takes the whole width of the parent. Then we align everything at the center. Uh, and then background color, we don't put any background color. Now, to the buttons. We have a button with favorite, latest, and trendy. So we use, put three buttons there. We draw, drag and drop the first button, the second button, and the third button. So. Uh, the first button, it is favorite. So let's just type that in. So in the first button, these are the properties. You can edit them over here. And you can make them, you can make the background to be none and font to be bold because it's a bit big and it's a title. Let's put 18. Uh, for, uh, 18 is too big. Uh, 16 there. Then I want to touch the font typeface. The height, I say, fill parent so that it it fills the entire the entire height of the navigation of our custom navigation bar. Then width, uh, we are going to edit this width uh, uh, in a short while after I explain something. Then um, it's called favorite, favorite. Then I want to touch text alignment because it's, it's at the center the way we want them to be. And then the text color is white. Oh, bless him. Okay, white. Yes. So it has started taking shape. So we are going to do the same for uh, the only disadvantage of MIT now. I wish that maybe we could. I don't know. Like if I could be able to copy paste this button, <laughs> it would have been a bit faster. But for now, this is what we have anyway. So, yeah. So we have favorite. Then uh, the second button is latest and then trending. So let, let's just do that very quickly. So background color none, font bold, uh, 16. Then height field parent. Sorry. <laughs> let me come to. 
okay, height, field parent, okay. Then um, text is, I keep on forgetting, letters. Yes, so letters, and it's in capital letters. Then text color, white. So letters is in. Then the last one is trending. So, uh, okay, we do the same, but on three, there is font bold, 16, um, height, field parent, um, background color, none. Uh, we do the text to be trending. I keep forgetting, I don't know. Okay, so trending, uh, text color, white. Fantastic. So that is taking shape. So if you look at my screen, like I've decided that if it is active, the text color is white, but the other ones are like a lighter shade of white. Of course, so that a person or a user knows where they are exactly in the application. So to change that, let's say letters is our active right now. We are just had coding. We say um, the text color should be um let's say gray yeah light gray is a bit okay yeah light gray then we do this the same here light who is light gray yes light gray then there are these lines here that separate the buttons that is so simple in mit what you use is a label you just put a label there remove the text then height you say it feel parent, then the width, something like one pixel. I love who we say the background color to be white. Very simple. So and I, you do the same here, and then you remove the text, height, fill parent, width, uh, one pixel. And then the background color to be white. Okay, so if you change the screen orientation of this, you find that the tabs are just because it's Mezubatu, they are looking at you. We want to make them as responsive as possible. So what you do is you make every button with to be field parent. You do this after you've placed every item in the horizontal arrangement. So you say field parent, it will occupy or the, the buttons will occupy the exact width. You know there are different rules in programming or in, in languages, but with this prototyping tool, that's what happens, yeah. So you find that even if I change the orientation to a tablet size, it fits exactly. If I change to a monitor size, it fits exactly the way I want or the way you want. So you have to think about uh, the respons responsive design as well, because we have different font sizes. So I think we are satisfied with Sorry. Uh, yeah, I think we are satisfied with the top. Now, let's go to the fun part. We are going to add the, these images. And this is the simplest part, I can assure you. So what we do is we need some click, some clickable, some clickable user interface widget. Oh, I love using widget because uh, uh, I create applications with Flutter a lot, but let me, let me say components. Eh? You, you, you have to use a bit of a clickable component, even if you want your application to, be, to look nice and graphic, at least use a clickable component. One of the clickable components that I love using is a button. An image might not be as clickable as you might think right now in MIT. Maybe it is, but a button is the one that has, that has more features. So, I'll put my button there and I'll make the height to be a bit big, to be the, one, the way our screen look like because a button has a lot of features. So this first button, we can say the height to be around, um, let me say 30%. It will just occupy 30% of the screen. Even though our screen is scrollable, it will measure 30% of any screen. Like if you use a tablet size, it will 
just be 30%. Then the width is, of course, still parent. Now, when you look at our text here, you find that they are at the, what's the right? Yes, what's the right? So let's start editing this button. You say uh, background color, there's no need to change that. We're going to, to use a background image. The font is a bit big, so it's around 22. Uh, yeah, 22, and it's bold. And then uh -huh, image. Now, this is where we upload our image. Oh, I've chosen font italic, sorry for that. So let's pick an image. Yes. So we started with Jurassic World. Let's start with that one. Of course, you can download these images anywhere you want. Ensure that they are not royal, uh, like you can't, you're free to use them. And I think 30% is too, yeah, it's okay. At least it's not very stretchy. Yeah, I, I can use 35 to just make the image. Uh, yeah, something like that. Then uh, the text is, Jurassic World. You change the text there. Alignment is right. Then text color is white. I think 22 is too big. Let me just confirm that. Yeah, let's put 20. But you're free to, I don't know. Maybe I'm seeing it's too big and in your end it's a bit small, so feel free. So this is the button. For Jurassic World. So every component that you want to make it clickable, you, you rename it from the side. If you're just using it to display the user interface, you just rename it, yeah, you just leave it the way it is. But uh, when you go to the block section, you might have a challenge to find the button that you want. So let's just rename that to Jurassic, not in caps, Jurassic. BPM or button, whichever whichever name you you are comfortable with. Okay. So if you have any questions, please feel free feel free to ask. Okay. So that's the first button. The first button is done. So let me just add the last one to save on time. But you can do this to the rest of the. You can add more. So I'll just drag, or I can even uh, drag them completely there. Okay, awesome. Don't worry, we'll share the video after. Thank you for asking. We are going to share the video after. So this Jurassic World button, we, we just copy the features that are here. So if this just let me just do that very quickly. Of course, it's font ball. We say it's 20. Then the whole size, I'm not going to touch that. Height thirty five percent. A parent image. We are going to upload another one. So I'm just uploading it from the computer. The second one is all hail to. I know you all love movies in one point or the, everyone has preferences. So hey all. Or I can just say King Julian like that. Then the text alignment is at the right and the text color is white. Okay, let me just do the last one. In mind, there are four, if you can look at them. Just the same thing, the same features in the bottom. So let's go to the Wakanda one. Hmm. You can say Black Panther. Hey, Black Panther. And alignment, right, text color, right. So mm, we come to uh, font bold, font size 20, uh, huh. height 35%, width fill parent, image. Images of what? Uh, Black Panther. So I just downloaded them somewhere. So, so if you see, you can scroll them and view whatever we've added. Yeah, so it's that simple. So I'll rename this to 
by Julian DTM. And then lastly, I renamed this to Black Panther or just the Panther DTM. Okay. So uh, of late, I've noticed that Zoom cuts you off a bit when you, have, when you have exceeded 40 minutes. So I, I'm seeing that it's almost 15.40. So when it cuts you off, just uh, join us again. We apologize for that. So you can join us again. So, okay. This is how our UI looks like exactly. If you run, to the, if you run in your phone, you won't see this. Uh, background and you're going to test this application in the phone. So you see how fast it is to create this. It's very smart. You are just drag drop in the few features. So I'll create the second user interface. Let me work on the second user interface. So add screen. I'll just let me just call it screen too or details, whichever. But renaming a screen is very important. So in the details screen let it just load okay so i can see the title to be movie detail so don't worry you're going to share these resources everything you're going to share the videos you're going to share the source code you can import this and try changing it to anything you want feel free so in the movie details as you can see in our page the moment you click on one movie detail, it shows you the exact image that was there and the details and the title and the details. So let's do that. Movie details. We in this screen we can say uh, everything horizontally should be aligned at the center. Okay. So, so we are going to drag uh, an image. You're going to drag an image there and say height, 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 a bit 35% is okay. 35% is great. Then with, you can say fill parent. So feel free to ask questions, but as you can see, there are these features in MIT at Inventor that when you just use them, you are, it just gets in your So like in responsive design, use percentages as many times as possible, even if your screen is scrollable. It makes your application look um, professional, even if it's done by MIT. You know, people hear MIT up in Venture and they say, hmm, just to create uh, simple apps. No, you, your creativity is what matters, no matter what tool you're using. Bear that in mind. Okay, so we can go to picture. I'll just use any for now, and we'll just make it dynamic then scale picture to see. So it looks good. Okay. So I'll put some spacing before the title. So this will be a label. We can see height to be, we can just leave it like that. It will make some spacing between the image and the text. If you don't, that image will touch this, will touch the text directly and your user interface won't look that nice. So you can even put some 10 pixels height to make the some spacing to create some breathing space for this. Then I can call this title because you're going to use it in dynamic in uh, coding this in the dynamic end. So let me just call it title txt. Txt. Yes. So in the title text uh, font size 14 is great. So I can call this Jurassic World. Yes, and it's just temporary because we will change that font bold. Yeah, then put another label below and put some, what do we say? I can, for just some spacing. And then put another label, we say description. Description. No, sorry, I can just say, I don't know, let me, I can copy some Lore Ipsum text, but let me just try to that description and rename this to description TXT. Fantastic. 
Okay. Awesome. So in this text, let me just show you uh, something. Uh, let me just copy. If the text is of big magnitude or it is huge, you might find that you need to learn some, some ways in, uh, to position your text. So let me just copy this. Control copy. And when I paste here in the description section, you find that some words disappear. So that's where the height and the width come in. The width, you can say 90% to give some breathing space at the left and the right. And then this text, if you run this application in real time, it will cut you somewhere here where that square thing is. So we can say height, we can put some large amount of pixels, some 500, something like that. Okay, that might be too big, but let yeah. me just, I don't know, 200, and that's it. Yes, yeah, 200 is great to give some scrolling space. Yeah, so we are done with the two screens. Now we want to make them dynamic. Like if you can see in our screen, let me go back a little. So what I'm using to emulate this is called Droid a Screen will share as well. Mm -hmm. And then when you click on Jurassic World, the Jurassic World image is the one that will show if you click on All Hail King Julian. So I've not created this screen, like separate screen for All Hail King Julian, for, eh, for Black Panther, no. I have only reused one screen and you're going to see how we are going to reuse that. So any question? Are you guys okay? We continue, or are you tired? We can continue, right? Okay, awesome. Okay, so let's do, uh, let's now do the dynamics. So here at the designer section is the user interface section. Now, the blog section is where our magic happens. Okay. So, okay. So there is a question in the comment section. Uh, must I have uh, from Omu? Oh, thank you guys for your feedback, by the way. Thank you so much. You can see in your comments. We really appreciate. Then there is a question from Omu. Must I have knowledge on mobile application programming to use these tools? No, you don't have to have that knowledge at the moment. Uh, but it's advisable for you to really enjoy programming. Uh, you at least some simple programming rules, and this tool just gives you that. So, if for example you want to implement uh, something and you're using MIT App Inventor and you do a quick Google, uh, a quick Google search, you'll find a result that will help you learn to do something. And those are the programming knowledge that you, you will be gaining. So no, you don't have much for you to have a mobile uh, programming uh, session. So thank you guys for joining us again. So let's now call this, uh, this is now the interesting part, the dynamic part. So we named our Jurassic button that, uh, that way so that you can be able to click, okay? So when you click on the Jurassic button, there at the, at the block section, of course there, there is this built-in section, built-in block section that you can use to do now the programming bit. Yeah, like the control section, there is the if else statement, logic, if something is equal to something, we can, if you have time, we can be doing this. But are the, these are the built-in and the procedures, variables. I'm sure the, the little programming knowledge that you learned in school now, this is where they come in, like putting, uh, initializing a variable, something like that. We have colors, and this one has dictionary. I, I never knew it has this. I think this is an added feature, but we'll explore them next time. So, hmm, the Jurassic button. We now want, when a user clicks this button, what happens? It takes you to the details page. So we click on control. Okay, when you click on Jurassic World, you pick the on click. Uh, these are like Legos. Yeah. So you click on the, you pick on that first uh, block, like when Jurassic button is clicked. 
So you go to the control and then scroll a bit down, you see, open another screen, screen name. So since we want to make this dynamic, we say open another screen with start value so that when the start value of, uh, of when you click on something and it pushes a certain start value, it changes the images and the text on that screen. So it's very simple, you're going to use that. So Jurassic World, uh, this is the first button, and the, uh, the page that you want to navigate to, it's called Details. So you use a text widget, uh, put it there, uh -huh. and then this here you can duplicate, and thank God you can duplicate here. So the page is called Details. So Details, so then Start Value, we can say Jurassic, like that. Then, okay, there's, I think there is a question, let me see. Okay, yes, yes. So you'll get a video after this, don't worry. This is being recorded, so you'll get the video after this, don't worry. And also feel free to ask uh, uh, questions even after the session. You can email me or Ruth. Ruth is also an, an expert in MIT application inventor, and feel free. So this, when, when a user clicks on Jurassic button, it will take them to the details page. And in the details page, the start value will be Jurassic. So let's duplicate. And uh, the second button is King Julian. We can say start value to be Julian, like that. The last one, now this is now the part where you're, you're going very fast. Black Panther, we say start value to be Panther. So let me just write that down. I want to be as accurate as possible because if you rename, uh, if you get the wrong start value application, you have an error. Apologies. So let me just write that. Is Jurassic. Jurassic. Now the, this is where a pen becomes useful. Julian and then Panther. Fantastic. Now, so we go to the screen now. So we are satisfied with screen one because we are sure that when you click on these buttons, they will take you to this screen. Yes. They will take you to this screen. So let's change this screen uh, to make it dynamic the way we want. So we come to the block section and then we say, okay, if you look at the block sections, there is still the same, there is the built-in section and then there is the detail section. So when you click on the details page, because our page is called details, we want that when you initialize that page or when you're entering that page, it gets to know the initial value of the button that you clicked previously. So just that simple. Okay, another way to avoid maybe writing like me, that is very old school. We can go to the screen, screen one, and then this Jurassic, we add to a backpack here. This is like a backpack so that and you don't have to copy. It's like you are pasting there, duplicate. Oh no, add to backpack. Yes. So in your backpack, you'll have this. So you don't have to write like me. Yeah. I guess writing is something, uh, yeah. Okay, so there is a question. Uh, which version of MIT App Inventor am I using that allows you to switch screens? Uh, okay, thank you for your feedback. Uh, the, the version, this MIT is just MIT App Inventor 2 and it's the online one. There is the one that is locally, uh, you can download it to make it like an application. You can code it without the internet. But this one is the online one. You just go to ai2.appinventor.mit.edu and then you log in with your Gmail account and you can enjoy I think they've been up updating this, and I can see that they're even new. This I never knew this was here, but it's something we can all explore. Okay, so we are satisfied with screen one, and this back part is when you want to copy, and you can even copy a source code from one one uh, one project, put it in your backpack, go to another project, and remove it from your backpack, edit a few things. So there is that bit of making it a bit faster. Okay, and then let's go to the details page since we are satisfied with the uh, screen one. So let's go to the details page. We say when the details is initialized, 
what do you do when the detail stage is initialized? Now we go to the control section. Now here is where we are going to use if and else statement. Drag that if, drop it there, and then if start, what do we call? Let me, where is it? Okay, so if uh, get start value is equal to Jurassic. Hmm. Wait, where is this disappear? Yes. If get start value is equal to Jurassic. So you say you use a logic of an equal, this one. You drag it and put it there, and then say if get start value is equal to Jurassic, what do you do? You change image one, set image one dot picture to. So let me just go to, since I've not crammed this, let me go to the designer section. I can see the image is called Jurassic.png uh, since we've dropped them here. So you come and, uh, to the block section and uh, put a text there and see if you misspell, you, you'll have an error. Jurassic dot, was, was, J, I think J, I'm sorry. I keep on forgetting. So Jurassic dot PNG and then the title text, set text title to what? So you set, set uh, sorry, you set title text to Jurassic. So you can sometimes, you don't have to go and pick at things here all the time. You can just type at the screen here a text. I want a text. I press enter and then you see uh, Jurassic. Jurassic World or Jurassic Park. Then the description I don't care right now, okay, but you can change that. So that is if the start value is Jurassic. So if the, so there is the else if you drag there. Else if, let's just duplicate this, the start value is, and delete that, Julian's on a Jurassic. So we go to Julian. What we do is, yes, we duplicate like that. So we set image one to, since my, I cannot remember the name, they go to the media here. Black Panther JPG. So let's go to block. Black Panther. Then we just say Black Panther. I hope you're getting now what a, a gist of what we are doing. Then you can say else if or else because it's the last battle. But let me just use else if. Hmm. Get start value is, duplicate. let me duplicate this, put there, and then uh, pan, no, 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 now this is not black. Okay, let me just change. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm being, conf I'm confusing the application. The first one is, uh, okay, Julian is supposed to be King Julian. So don't worry. Yes like that. So if it's Julie, okay, if Black Panther, no, if it's Julian, now we come to, okay, I'll just do this. Uh, okay, how is it? Let me just look at how I named it, document. Uh, let me just copy that because it's what is in my uh, here. So then I come to blocks and, uh, okay. Julian Panther, then you can say this all hell. All hell King Julian. Then this one picture will be that one. Oh, dot JPG, sorry, dot JPG. Uh, okay, so Jurassic, Jurassic.jpg, Julian, no, supposed to be. Uh, let me just look into that quickly. Uh, okay, King Julian. Okay, and I'm confused now. But, <laughs> it, okay, not in a bad way, but if the start value is Jurassic, Julian, or Panther, 
So this one, let me just interchange that. Panther, yes. Okay, my confusion is over. So let me just see, the, the, I think there are questions uh, in, in the chat section. Okay. So there is a question. Thank you guys for your feedback, first of all. Then, can you create prototype using MIT App Inventor while offline and come up with an effective user interface? Yes. All these features that I'm using here will be in the offline application. Yeah, the reason why I'm not using offline one is uh, just my, my computer storage is not that huge. So mm, I, I just take the, use the, uh, the one that is here. So, Yes, you can create great user interfaces. The thing is creativity. Look for inspirations in, app, uh, in uh, user interfaces or uh, look for online inspirations and try and replicate them. So that's what I can say. But no tool is perfect. And no tool will ever be perfect. But with your creativity, you can use any tool to make your application a reality a prototype, a good prototype that you can present. So as you can see, okay, as I'm speaking, we have finished this application. So I can just even, uh, let me go to screen one and go to the designer section. I can run this build, provide QR code for APK so that we see how it looks like. So it's Q&A time, feel free as we are running the application, feel free to ask questions. As this is loading, I'll just be, uh, I just want us to run and see what we have done. Hmm. Taking a bit of some time. Feel free to ask any question. It's just taking a bit of a few minutes. There it goes. So I'll just scan the QR code with my phone. As it loads, yes, there it goes. Copy open. We go back to the dreaded screen. So I've scanned the QR code. <laughs> okay. I hope it's downloading. Sorry, sorry. I copied it so. Okay, so it's downloading, open, install. Okay, I'm seeing uh, people raising hands, Amina. Feel free to ask, unmute yourself. Um, madam. Yes. I was asking in case. Uh. Your phone does not have a back camera. Any regarding the QR code, mm -hmm. can you just type it in? Then it will connect with the with your phone. How? Yes. Okay. There's okay. There are so many ways you can do that. There is okay. There is connect here. We have AI companion. You can install an MIT application called AI companion. When you install this application in your phone, you will be able to run MIT applications. So you just use that to emulate your application, or you can use an emulator, or you can use your USB. So there are so many options. You, if you don't have a back camera and you want to have the feel of the application, you can click on build, then there is save APK to my computer. So it, let me just even, I don't know if this has an option to share the APK file in the comment section, but I can just drop it right now uh, at the comment section. So there are so many ways you can do that if you don't have a back camera or if you're using a tablet. So have I answered your question, Amina? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And you're welcome. Any other question? Feel free. As we are, we are winding up, I welcome uh, Ruth, the director. Okay, I can see a question from Omar. Can we see the link so as to download the app for testing? Oh, I apologize. Let me just share with you the app right now in the comment section. 
let me just share. We will even email, since all of you guys joined, uh, we'll email you the application. So yeah, here it is. So let me just save in my downloads. Oh, or, or there, that's better. Then uh, let me see if I can drop a file in the com. I'm not sure if I can, this is on uh, chat. Five, yes, there is an option. So let me just drop file to everyone in the, in the, everyone in the meeting, my computer. It will just take a minute. Uh, documents. Um, there we go. So feel free to test it out. It's coming. So this is what it looks like. I'm uh, hoping that I have not made an error anywhere. This is the, what we just created today. When you click on Jurassic World, you see the Jurassic World image is the one that is loading. When you click on King Julian, you see the King Julian data is loading. When you click on Black Panther, you see that the Black Panther details are the one that is loading. I hope that is satisfactory. It has taken us roughly one hour, only one hour. And it's because, yeah, we were talking. But if you're just alone, this can take quicker. It's very easy and very fast to prototype using MIT App Inventor. So any other questions? Okay. Ruth? I think Ruth, you can take over now. Okay. Thanks, John, for the session. It has been very, very helpful and we hope we can uh, we can do more. So as John has said, We'll work on editing the video and share it on our YouTube channel. Then we'll share with every, everyone who has attended the meeting. Hope you, you are able to sign up for the, for, the, for the call so that you're able to get your email. If you didn't, just drop your email on the, on, the, on the chat and we'll be able to get it and share with you. Also, we plan, we've been getting a lot of requests from from the audience, from participants to start online classes. So we plan to start online classes on web development, Python programming, mobile application on 18th. And also, we've been also been requested by some parents to help their kids. So we'll, we'll be sharing information more on, uh, on our social media platforms. If you, are on a, if you are on our WhatsApp group, we'll share the information. If you are interested, you can always join. You can always share with friends as well. So that's it for today. Thank you so much. We look forward for sharing another session. We'll keep you posted on whatever next that you are going to train. Thank you so much, Joan. Thank you so much, Ruth. Okay. Awesome. So uh, with your... Uh, Ruth, with your maybe uh, with your advice or something, we can now end the session, right? Yes, yes, we can. Unless anyone has any question, we should be able to end. Okay. So I've just shared our emails, Ruth, with your permission. Can I maybe share to everyone? Ruth? Okay, I guess she's left. So I've shared our emails. I think you can message us if you have any feedback or uh, anything. Then we'll share our, we'll share everything uh, on, on YouTube and we'll share on, even on, uh, on WhatsApp, feel free. So thank you so much. Bye, everyone.
Bye, John. Bye-bye.